Welcome to Ask Miss Mears, where we answer your most burning questions and solve your most nagging problems. I won't always know the answer, but I'll know someone who will. Today's topic is a problem I'm sure all of us are dying to solve. Six months into quarantine, we've been faced with not just the danger of catching a life-threatening virus, but also with the challenge to keep ourselves physically, mentally, and emotionally fit. Our guests today are shining examples of that. I know they seem superhuman, but we'll try to extract their human powers that are just like yours and mine. Please welcome the grand winners of Century Tuna Super Buds 2020, Samantha Ashley Lowe and Sam Ajdani. Oops. Hello, hi. hi. Hello, Hello, Sam and Sam. <laughs> we have two Sams. So how do people tell you apart? Do they call you Samantha and Sam or Sam A and Sam L? That has yet to be fixed. We both kind of <laughs> yeah. Okay, so today I will call you Samantha and Sam. Perfect. How are you today? I'm good. Doing great. Great. Thank you for having us. Thank you Once for again. being here. I was asking uh, Sam, Sam A, have you been eating tuna since you won? <laughs> 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 or are you taking a break first? <laughs> have you when been you eating won? tuna, Samlo? <laughs> um, I'm no. used to calling it Samlo. That's like the best protein for my breakfast because uh, one of my friends is like, you can mix them, like make tuna scrambled eggs and it's shockingly oh. good. So that's what I've Perfect. been doing. Yeah. Right. So are you still uh, riding high on the euphoria of your victory? Are you like still floating on cloud nine? Um, I mean, every day someone like surprises me with a new article. Like GMA just came out with an article for me, and it was so sweet. So it's just cool. it just adds that little happiness to my day. And both of you have competed in pageants before. What? How was this one different? Was it easier or harder? It was harder because it was pandemic, in a sense. Right. So mentally, it was challenging because normally when you enter a competition, the time period is super different, that right. everything is kind of expected to go a certain way, but with this one, everything was like a surprise. Oh, it's happening. Oh, this is what we're going to do next. Okay. <laughs> well, it was yeah. kind of a relief when they brought it back. They're, they like sent us, this is how Century Tuna surprises you. They send you a box of 50 cans of tuna with a little note wow. saying, it goes back on, and we're like, okay. So that was the highlight of the pandemic, I think. How many months was it extended, actually? Was it, when was this uh, final supposed to be? Um, April? April okay. 19th, I think. Right. So was yeah. it, because I was wondering the same thing, like, I wonder if it's easier or harder for the contestants that it was extended, like, They'll have more time to work out, but then is that like kind of extending the difficulties? Like, oh no, I thought it would be over in April, but no. It's it like, gets oh. more distracting, in my opinion. For me, it got more distracting because when I focus, I want to be focused for a certain period of time and get something done. And then right. it's got this log got prolonged and then so it was easier to get distracted and there was no genes and everything so everyone was kind of you know challenged it was like kind of a play by ear situation but i think we did well in the end i mean seven right. months seven months of working out was a little exhausting but we did it sam we made it <laughs> good job good job you, you really did it and in, in those seven months did you ever like get lazy or was there a time when you're like, oh, I can't do it anymore? Or did you like encounter, you know, human no. challenges? Every no? single day, three times no a day. Way. I watch up chocolate. No, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Of course I did. <laughs> yeah, there was a time for sure that I got lazy. Like how lazy? 
Like maybe lazy for well, you is like two lazy times. for me is like taking two weeks off, maybe one week, oh, not is. being wow. focused. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And for you, Samantha. Oh. Well, if you see Sam's Instagram, I just saw like a recent, or not a recent, I don't know, one of his videos where he's like throwing himself over the pull-up bar and like doing these forwards and backwards claps when he does push-ups and everything. Yeah. I mean, if you take two weeks off, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I need my playground. <laughs> it is your playground, I can see that. Um, for me, okay, so it did, there were times where I would go like full on, um, like full on swole mode. I'd work out constantly. I'd be on a strict regimen. And then, you know, for, for us girls, for us ladies, we get that surprise in the month, that once a month visit from mother nature. Right. And, um, and I named mine, her name is Agnes. And she's incredibly, <laughs> incredibly Agnes. Agnes. And she just want like I named all my roommates. So we have Victoria, and Glenda as well that join Agnes during the month. And it's just a mess. Like nobody wants to work out. No one wants to do chores. Everyone wants to eat just like pizza, ice cream, and cake. So yes, there were definitely times that were a struggle. And speaking of ice cream and cake, speaking of ice cream and cake, the pandemic saw like, like at least online, all these yummy food crazes, right? There's like, Uba cheese pandesal or the Basque burnt cheesecake. How did you stay focused despite all those temptations? And I can imagine people kept, did people send you like all these treats and delicious food? We tried them. I tried them, but not every day. <laughs> yeah. Or was your willpower so strong that you're like, Really like no only tuna only tuna. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Miss Mirza? How did did anyone send you some goodies, some like treats to you? you Lot, yes, yes, lots of goodies. But I was not in any competition, and so <laughs> I indulged. <laughs> and That's so great. for for the rest of us who are not in any competition. Uh, maybe later on we'll run by the tips that you prepared so that, you know, somehow we can imbibe your winning habits. <laughs> what about uh, emotional and mental challenges? For, for Sam Lowe, I saw your post uh, one day in August where you posted something very revealing about how depressed you got because of what you went through prior to the competition. Do you want to... Talk about that and how you overcame it because mental and emotional stress can become a big obstacle in getting physically fit, right? Because you're yeah. depressed. Um, I, I mean, I threw the term depression in. I, I can't clinically say it was depression, but um, it was a really low point where um, I would wake up and I just didn't want to do anything. I'm like, there's nothing left. For me and it's so sad to think that i allowed um you know something in my life to just take over to have that much strength um that afterwards i just didn't want to do anything like that was the end of life for me um so it took a while and thank god i have the support of my family and my friends to get through this because i just i felt empty it really just felt dark it felt draining and sad and um, it, it took maybe four months for me to kind of like get back onto a healthy regimen, especially when Century Tuna started. Like, I just felt like I found a place that I really belong, you know, something that's really fitting for me. You know, Sam lifts weights, they lift weights, I lift weights. So now we're in this cool club together. And that's just, I realized you have to start doing things that you love again. So I think right. that's what happened is I finally found things that I love. Right. And maybe surrounding yourself with like-minded people. At yeah. least you were in it alone. And for Sam, you said that uh, people might compare themselves in social media and maybe look at you and say, oh my God, I'll never be like Sam Ajdani. I mean, look at those abs. And you said that's not the point, right? The point is not to compare your abs with somebody else's abs. 
Well, uh, it's, I think it goes back to everyone's mindset. You know, you could be comparing, you know, I would be lying if I told you that when I was younger, I wasn't comparing, you know, I didn't, when I saw something, I didn't want it or think that why don't I have that abs or something, but it's just, you know, we all learn, we all grow and we all develop a stronger, better mindset over time. And we realize that it's, it's good to look at those as a source of inspiration and really focus on yourself and work on yourself, becoming a better human being, you know, that's what really matters. Right. We're going to show some of the things you did to yourselves. Uh, <laughs> some of your favorite moves. Hang on. Let me just work the tech right here. Uh, okay. I like this one. Because, sorry. There we I see the sound. Yeah. <laughs> With a bottle of water. That's how you stay fit during quarantine. <laughs> that was my make you know, Like, I didn't have weight. I wasn't going to spend so much. So I was like, water's heavy. <laughs> this will do. Right. So if people say, well, the gym is closed or what am I going to do? No, it's not. <laughs> Go get that water. <laughs> no excuse. And then for so I guess you did all sorts of things with that jug of water. What else did you use in lieu of a gym? Me? Yeah. Um, I'm actually a runner. I've been a runner for longer oh, yeah, than I've okay. been. A gym person um so i run every day i run in basig okay so here i got this from sam's instagram you call it animal flow oh yeah i learned animal flow during quarantine actually because i had no equipment and right. i use bands and animal flow it's very challenging on the body because you need a strong core a lot of uh, muscle strength you know, stability, everything. So I recommend it if people are watching. You make it look so easy, but it's actually hard. No, no, no. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm really a beginner in animal flow. I'm just starting to oh. learn. And it looks like some something beginners could actually do, right? Right, with enough practice. It looks very easy, but it's not. <laughs> That's it's very the thing about it. Yeah, it looks easy, but it's not easy. Right. It reminds me of kind of like capoeira. Is this like a mm -hmm. new... It has some moves from capoeira as well. It's, it's similar. Capoeira is, I think, harder. Okay. Yeah. Also, I stalked uh, more of your Instagram to see <laughs> some cooking. <laughs> it's like where Sam actually made a quiche from scratch. It's actually a lot easier than it seems and kind of enjoyable. So that's like a tuna quiche? Yeah. Um, the only challenging part was the dough because I did this recipe maybe like five times prior and the dough I couldn't get right. Like the secret is everything has to be super cold when you make it. Cold? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so the butter this is good. Cold and, hmm? This is actually the fifth quiche. <laughs> you tried five times. Don't ask me about this before. Oh my god. <laughs> well, practice made perfect. So you actually eat carbs. It's nice oh, to I know that. Carbs. Oh yeah. So it's not like a non-carb diet for you. No, what I need carbs. But then how did you uh, kind of like balance the carbs with the protein. Do you did you follow like some sort of specific proportion or? Um, it just depended on how my body was that month. Again, you know how I was saying like girls have that monthly time. So like at right. the that time of the month, I bloat super easily. Like I could drink water and gain like ten pounds. It's ridiculous. 
Um, but on other days, I just eat a healthy amount of carbs along with protein. If I eat a lot of sugar, then that's where I'm in trouble. I can't even believe that you get bloated. Oh no, it, it's, it's terrible. It's like a very bad deploy. So here we have oh salad. Oh my God, I'm cooking. <laughs> <in there. laughs> oh, so pretty. Power bowl. Did you do this yourself? Be honest. <laughs> yeah, I did this myself, but I got, I got help from my friend who's a chef. He told me it looks good. It's good. It's actually quite simple to make, you know, and it's something I would make again if I, I like, cook. I like that there's seaweed <laughs> and brown rice, and that looks like cauliflower. But do you guys uh, really eat this way, like honestly? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and is it hard to eat this way or not? Because I asked Sam, was he ever tempted by all the carbs that were like really very tempting? He said, I never get tempted. <laughs> wow. God bless you, Sam. <laughs> but how no, do you I do get how... tempted. No, there is a difference. Okay. There is a difference with eating it moderately and really, you know, having that addiction to it. I think I'm someone who eats things moderately. And it's not out of temptation. It's just out of me wanting to eat it. And I don't feel guilty for eating. So you no. are able to moderate when maybe most are not able. Like, are you the kind who can eat just five chips and then put the bag away? No, <laughs> I'll, I've, I'll, I'll, I've I'll have half of the bag. bag. I'll, I'll have half of the bag at least. But I don't do it every day. How, how about you, Sam Lu? Are you like... No, I, I, eat you... bag. I don't share. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay well, let's... But Sam Lu is a runner, so she's going to burn it anyway. You know, uh... whatever she is. <laughs> Wait, Sam, who, okay. cooks in, who cooks in your household? Is it you or your wife? She does most of the time. But when I want to eat clean and less carbs, then I have to, you know, do it myself. I Normally, I just go for tuna and eggs and stuff like that, chicken breast, boring diet. Yeah. But do you eat rice or bread? Or Brown more rice. Vegetables? Okay. Because it's also hard, like some people say, they have this... A uh, reason that, well, I live in a house with kids, and how am I going to diet if they're kids? And you have a son who's three years old, and of course, he has to eat everything, right? How yeah. do you manage to do that in your household? Is it like only healthy things are allowed in the house, but then there's a child, and so you have like candy? And yeah, we just, we just uh, minimize the amounts of sweets he eats because they really do crave for sweets. He does eat candies and stuff, but maybe two candy, one candy every other day, you know, and he goes really happy for that, you know, as if it's like a treat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first, let's, let's do uh, Sam Ace tips first because they're more of the physical ones and Sam Lowe's are more of the mental ones. So Sam Ace first tip is... Move throughout the day. Kind of challenging if you're in lockdown. So what's your advice for that? Um, move throughout the day because a lot of people think, okay, if you need to be fit, you need to be fit like Sam Blow or me or any other person. But the, the thing that I want them to understand is that a little movement goes a long way. Even if you walk around or... Especially stretching, taking like 10 minutes to stretch every few hours really helps you, you know, develop more awareness towards your body. And from there, you can take more steps into, you know, uh, being more fit if you decide to, okay, let me go for a run. And so be it. It's just deciding to move initially, whether it's stretching or walking or something, especially for, for older people. It's going to help them a lot. And for younger guys, they're full of energy. They can run. They can do sports. You know, it doesn't have to be weightlifting or gym. There's a lot of options. 
Right. I guess it's deciding. I like that word, deciding to move. So it starts with deciding. <laughs> Then your second tip is make time to clear your head. What do you mean by that? Make time to clear your head, especially now during the pandemic, because we are kind of stuck at home. Not anymore as much as before, but in the beginning, you know, when you're in a closed environment, you tend to be on your social media a lot. You tend to overthink stuff, worry about stuff, and that's not going to help you, honestly, because you're not changing anything by worrying. So the thing that I would recommend is either meditation, breathing techniques, uh, yoga, stuff like that really helps you clear your head. And if you have a clear headspace, you have time to, fo you, you can actually focus that energy into something that's going to serve you instead of bother you. Do you have a personal, uh, head clearing routine like do you meditate in the morning or what is your routine i normally meditate i wake up drink drink some water and meditate for maybe, and for how long for how long do you meditate it really depends on until i feel good i don't okay. before i used to go for you know these guided meditations which i do recommend And some of them are 20 minutes, 30 minutes. But now I do it until I actually feel like, okay, I'm okay. Sometimes it takes three minutes. Sometimes it takes 10 minutes. Sometimes 30 minutes. And would you say uh, clearing headspace has a direct effect on like physical fitness? How does that help us get more fit? Because usually if we say, I have no time to meditate, I'm just going to go straight into my workout. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it does help with overall well-being. And my focus here is more on well-being. Uh, and I think that's even more important than being physically fit. Because if you don't feel good, then you can't do anything. And if your head is not clear, then certainly you won't be able to decide and commit to being physically active, like you mentioned earlier. So right. this... This would be a priority for me. But some people don't have that problem. You know, some people don't overthink. They're super happy. They don't even need to meditate. You know, they don't need to clear their head. So, you know, it depends on the person as well. Right. But it makes sense. For number three, you say eat more plants and whole foods. Yeah, Care you know, I, I try to keep it really simple here because it is simple. This lifestyle is actually very simple. So you, just, you eat more fruits. You get your plants and fruits from farms. That's what we've been doing. So it's organic and it's high quality. Uh, anything, you, you'll, you'll notice the benefits quite fast, actually. You start feeling better. You start having more energy. And, of course, you're... You strengthen your immune system, which is what we need now. And I feel like people need to actually bring more awareness towards these topics rather than the dangers of the situations we face right now, because we can only work to make ourselves prepared for what is dangerous out there. And that is by being healthy. Are there uh, bad foods that you have actually given up? Even up. Don't, don't eat anymore, like, let's say, processed food or white carbs? I don't eat white bread. Uh, what else? Nutella, I used to love it. Eat it. Uh, I don't you eat gave it, it up? <laughs> I gave it up, yeah. <laughs> And, yeah, there's, there's a couple. There's a few. Or did you find substitutes? Like, is there, like, a... Healthy Nutella made, for example, from what? Cacao? There probably is. There probably sugar. is, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Or has, has it helped you to like kind of not get used to sweet taste? Like, is uh, that something uh, Honestly, I love food? sweets. I love ice cream. I can just finish a whole, you know, ice cream. No problem. But I don't normally go for it. 
once in a while maybe if i'm really craving it's again it's a lifestyle you shouldn't feel guilty for actually eating those things as long as you're not overdoing it i think right and then here's a tip that people kind of ignore or downplay but it's really important right you want to tell us why uh oh, sleep sleep is very important you need energy everybody needs energy right we need energy and uh some people always wake up they feel down maybe they don't get enough sleep maybe they have to consider that fact that they have to put their phone away maybe 30 minutes 1 hour before sleeping to be able to sleep well and give the amount of attention it actually deserves sleeping has proven again and again and again uh, that it's going to actually lead to a better lifestyle you know lead to a happier you and more productive you or does the lack of sleep make you eat more the lack of sleep may lead to a little bit of anxiety and anxiety true can for sure will make you you know Stress. indulge in things you should indulge in. stress yeah. eat here's another tip that we tend to ignore what do you mean by a lot by a lot whatever you're drinking now double it so <laughs> if you think yeah <laughs> Yeah, if you're having a liter of water, make it two liters. If you're having two, make it three, four liters. Just be hydrated all the time. I think, especially if you're physically active, even if you're not active, it it plays a huge role in being, you know, fit. I mean, if you go work out and you're not drinking enough water, for sure, hundred percent, you won't get the results that. Uh, you could be getting if you were drinking enough water. Right. I think also for us women, right, Sam Low, dehydration can lead to bloating. I've read that if you're not drinking a lot of water, it can lead to bloating, constipation. It can lead to a lot of problems. Where women are just something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, these are Sam Low's tips. Remember, this is a lifestyle. It's not just a super buds competition that ends there, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us um, about how you've made it your lifestyle. Well, I started exercise. I started playing soccer when I was like in second grade. So I, well, as a kid, I already loved doing um, anything that involved sports or exercise. And then when I was 11 years old, my older sister was a varsity cross country runner, and she was like you know, the popular one on the team, she always beat state records. So I wanted to be just like her. And um, that got me into running. So ever since I was 11 years old till now, I've been running um, street races, half marathons, anything you name it. Um, and it really just is a lifestyle for me. Um, this isn't something that I can't really picture myself going without. Um, because it serves more than a physical purpose. It's also like a mental and emotional outlet. Like before I couldn't go a single day without running between three to six miles a day. Otherwise, like I would just be frazzled throughout the day and I couldn't focus. So um, for everyone who really is looking into exercise and fitness and change for the first time, I just want them to know that this is a lifestyle change. Um, you know, this does require commitment if you really are serious and want to dive into it. And what about the eating lifestyle? I mean, we women are so prone to the next new fad diet, like there's keto or there's whatever low carb or Mediterranean diet. How have you made an eating lifestyle that suits your uh, goals, your fitness goals? Well, before when I was a teenager, um, that I really wanted to be a model. I wanted to be a Victoria's Secret model when I was 14 and 15 so bad that I got a lot of the body image wrong. Like a lot of it is advertised poorly to where I wasn't eating or treating my body right. Like I was barely eating or I would restrict my eating. I would only eat like fruits and vegetables, barely any proteins or carbs. So like I really want people to educate themselves 
on the type of diet and um, the reason why people's bodies look the way they do. It's because everyone varies. Not one diet is fixed to one person. So again, I really, especially like the younger generation, I strongly urge them to not deprive themselves of food um, just because they think that's how they reach a goal. No, like make sure you treat your body right. Make sure you look at what foods are best for you um, because results do vary. So like now as an adult, um, as an adult, the only two things I don't like are things that are really oily and things that are fried um, because they just make me nauseous. So I like to eat um, a lot of plant-based. I love, I don't shy away from meat. I don't shy away from carbs. I love sugars, but I have to restrict myself on that because it, it leads to me getting a little hyper. Then it leads to me having anxiety and then I bloat and gain weight. So, you know, I, I've learned what my body needs. How do you practice moderation in your food intake? Do you count calories? Do you log everything you eat? What's your um, um, method? So it has been a process of trial and error. Um, I've noticed that if I had to play around with it for a while, um, I don't count calories. I used to do that and that's what drove me nuts. And I would just be more anxious about what I was eating rather than enjoying food and enjoying the process of losing the weight or putting on muscle, you know, because this whole transformation, it really is um, something to be enjoyed. It really is an accomplishment that I don't want people to deprive themselves of. So, um, so I've just done portion control. I have to see how my body reacts to the portions. Um, if I notice that I'm gaining weight, then I know that I've had too many carbs and too many sugars. If I notice that I'm getting more lean, I notice that my protein and carb balance is perfect. So again, just pay attention to how your body reacts. Um, I highly recommend taking progression photos. Um, I do that all the time. And it just, you know, days where I'm like, oh, I'm so fat. And then I look at the photo, I'm like, oh, I look pretty good compared to like two weeks ago. So you prefer to show photos in like a number on the scale or? I can't do the scale anymore. That was <laughs> immortal enemy. Sometimes I do the um, the measuring tape for my waistline because that's a right. kind of more truer figure for me. But um, other than that, I don't really like to weigh myself because you know the muscle and the fat and everything it varies. So the the scale is your enemy or your frenemy <laughs> or immortal enemy. I will not share my scale. <laughs> All right. Next, you say consistency is key. Mm -hmm. How do you achieve that? Consistency is key. Um, I do feel like I've achieved it because um, when the finals rolled around for Super Bods, uh, our final week of, of filming, um, I feel like that was the best I've ever looked in my entire life. Like I had a cute little four pack and everything. And um, it's, I took notice that I just was really consistent with my workout. My workouts aren't necessarily like really long. They aren't two hour workouts. It's just like 45 minutes to an hour at max. And um, I know what my body needs. So as long as I remain consistent, um, again, consistency is a discipline. So that's really kind of the, the, one of the biggest secrets is if you stay consistent, you will see the results better and faster. And did you have like a, a method or a tool to keeping consistent? Like, did you use an app to remind you or did you have like a schedule that you followed strictly? Um, so I did notice that if I worked out every day, I kind of would just feel burned out. So I just told myself, work out four days a week, four to five days a week. Um, and always make sure like, Wednesday, just pick a designated day. So Wednesday was my rest day. And um, it would just let my muscles and everything relax because after workouts, your muscle fibers are breaking. So that's when you start to get a little swollen. So in time, you just got to let your muscles relax and detox, take all the lactic acid out. Um, so that's what I did. And then research and experiment. What do you mean by that? So like I said before, um, especially when it comes to dieting and trying to figure out what workout is best for you, what keto diet, Mediterranean, um, whatever it is, make sure you research 
um, get all your facts right, know what to expect um, if you do go on a diet, uh, like a specific diet, what kind of um, fat you'll be losing, what kind of muscle you'll be gaining, um, and then experiment. Don't be afraid to jump, not necessarily jump from diet to diet, but if something's not working out, okay, you can stop. Try something else because eventually you will get to what fits your body. Right. And then you mentioned the cheat tea. What is that? I have a cheat tea. Yeah, that, that was my main secret, actually. Um, so there's a tea that I guess, I guess people call it different names, but it's um, basically ginger, lemon, honey, and turmeric. And you just boil that all together. And it has a lot of antioxidants, nutrients, and properties that help um, flush out all the toxins from your body, help build your immunity. And um, ultimately what I saw is that the bloating stopped. I love coffee. Coffee, though, makes you bloat. It gives you the little pooch in your belly. Um, wow. So, yeah, that's it's like, you know, the love of my life. I realize it's poisoning me. So um, I realized that this tea takes the bloating away and my stomach, wow. instead of having that little like bump, it just was like straight after three days. So when I noticed wow. I started to bloat, I just have this tea once in the morning and at night before I go to bed. And then after three or four days, I noticed like a significant reduction. Wow. In yeah, definitely give that a try. It's a miracle tea. And all along, I thought that coffee was a diuretic and kind of a laxative, and so I right, take it, it is, every morning. It is to but, some extent, but it has, I forgot what, um, oh my gosh, it's a hormone or something it activates in your body that causes that little tiny pouch in your belly to bloat. It's uh -huh. like the most important so, I've got in 2020. Goodbye coffee as well. As the so no more coffee. Oh I, I drink coffee once in the morning for <laughs> my sanity, but after that, I gotta stop for my own good. Right, and then here's the most important tip. <laughs> um, definitely. So um, again, women, um, women and men vary with their bodies um, and the results. So if, you, if some girls have a male who's a trainer and the male is like, do this and do this and do this, and he might not have all the experience and the background of you know, how girls are different, um, just don't get frustrated. Realize that girls take a little longer. Girls naturally have more fat than men. This is something in our body so um, that we have. It's important when we bear children. Um, our body just generally needs it. So um, for all the young girls out there, don't be upset that you don't have a six pack of abs like how guys can get within a couple months. Um, you know, just our body types are just very different. So again, please do your research and make sure you are feeding your body properly and taking care of it. Like Sam said before, get that sleep because sleep is a huge factor in weight loss as well. Um, I noticed when I wasn't sleeping between seven to nine hours, I kept the weight or I gained the weight. So that's the, that's the main difference. Wow. You really monitored uh, all the results and the causes and effects this was like a middle school science project <laughs> seven year old did you have like a log where you were jotting down the effect of Actually, yeah um i had a, I had a journal that i kept in my phone and then of course next to the photos so i would like specifically log like this isn't working try this you notice this so yeah kept me sane right i also am very curious about how you both overcame stress in the pandemic. Because as we know, all the stress causes spikes in cortisol, which leads to, you know, retaining weight in the body. And so how did you stay sane during the pandemic? Sam, how you did you overcome stress? So that our I don't get stressed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh. See, I told you you're superhuman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I do get stressed barely. But yeah, stress is always going to be there. You know, overcoming it is just, for me, it's always been 
really meditation. It helps me and being kind to the people around me, you know, and just loving life, being present. That's all it takes for me. I don't struggle with this a lot. So I cannot really speak for people who struggle with it because I know people who struggle with a lot of stress, anxiety, and depression, and I don't see myself fit to represent them. And you also said, Sam, that you do, you practice media distancing. Oh, yeah, media distancing. Uh, it can stress you out, right? Media can right. stress you out. Uh, and um, it's just like a habit that we develop. I think it's really addicting to listen to the news, uh, the media, and it's normally bad news. You know, there's always some disaster happening somewhere in the world. And I'm sure there's, I'm not dismissing them, but I'm sure there's a lot of good things are happening as well. If you look just around you, there's a lot of good things happening. How much good things are happening in the world? Well, we don't see that. So it's maybe, it's been better for me to distance myself from, you know, uh, I don't want to be someone who's uh, hanging on to some ideal belief or whatever, or politics or stuff like that. So I do distance myself from, uh, from media and take the time for myself to read something and really grow from, I mean, learn from good minds in the world. That is, I think, more positive than listening to what's on the media. And it helps you mentally, emotionally. Right. You also said that you focus on being productive. And how, how productive were you? Like within the 24 hours of each day, did you devote like the bulk of that time on working out, um, century, the Superbods competition, or were you productive in other ways? Uh, normally, I work out just 45 minutes, one hour a day, just like Sam does. I don't work out for too long. And then productive, being with my family, I think that's a really productive way of spending time. And instead of focusing on the problems and what's going on, really plan and prepare for the future. Really, you know, being optimistic, uh, you know, dreaming, hoping, believing, stuff like that. It keeps you productive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And for Sam Lowe, <laughs> what are your tips for keeping I mean, sane? I think I think that's the cure is to media distance. It's so simple and it's so true. Um, um, I actually do feel better when I put the phone away, um, especially when I'm doing homework or I'm at work, and I just put the phone away for an hour. I notice like a huge difference. But um, as far as the stress and anxiety has gone. I develop really bad uh, panic attacks, like maybe two years ago. Um, wow. And throughout those years, like it, it's just, it's been a bit of a struggle, but I've gotten better at them. Um, I've, I've learned what triggers them. I learned how to cope with them. Um, I've had to go through breathing techniques to grounding techniques. And um, I totally understand everyone else who is feeling stressed and anxious through this time. Anxiety attacks suck. That's like the worst thing in the world. And it just cramps your day. It really is like the trip in your day because it just stops everything. Um, so for those out there, I highly recommend, please download um, meditation app or when you wake up in the morning, like Sam, please meditate because how you start your day is really a game changer. Um, eliminate the caffeine that you do. Um, Again, I only drink one cup of coffee a day because anything beyond that, I know I'm going to spiral into anxiety. And it's a trigger for anxiety as well. Um, getting enough sleep is a huge factor. If I don't sleep on time, if I like work beyond 1130, I start to feel the panic attacks come on. Um, wow. Yeah. And if you don't eat properly, if you're not eating the proper nutrition, the proper amount, That'll be another trigger for anxiety. I mean, like women, I told you, we're just a bundle of joy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I thought about medication for it, but at the same time, I was just like, I, I was on medication as a child for ADD. I was on it for about two and a half years and I hated it. It was just the worst. So I kind of have like a 
bad relationship with, you know, any, any sort of medications. I'm not hitting on anyone who takes medications. It's for you. It's for you. Um, for me, I kind of go just talk myself through it or um, it doesn't hurt. The Cuban route my mother does is you have a little glass of wine or a little glass of whiskey at the end of your night, just as your nightcap, just to kind of like, because the anxiety sometimes spirals out of control. And um, I mean, medication versus a very small, small glass of whiskey kind of, I feel kind of does the same thing to the body. Um, so that's like, that's how I address it. It's just a very, very controlled, moderate amount of wine if I need it. Right. That's like break glass in case of emergency. Okay. And it's healthy. Yeah, wine, it's good for the heart, so why not? <laughs> not as a habit. And you also said that yeah. you have learned to coexist with COVID. Care mm -hmm. to share how? Yeah, so I, I, in the beginning, I was afraid of everything when COVID hit. I'm not a paranoid person when it comes to that, but um, this time <laughs> it's a little different. So instead of being paranoid about stepping outside my door, I learned just take the safe, like the safety protocols, put your face mask on, put a face shield on. If you're going to that part of town where, you know, the cases are high, I always have a bottle of alcohol with me. I think I have like 10 bottles of alcohol in my purse, um, wear gloves and just socially distance from people. If you're, if you have symptoms, stay home. Um, I'm starting to notice that when I'm exposed to large groups of people, I get really, really sick within uh, one to two days. It's just because my immunity to the germs, again, is really low. So I just have to take a lot of caution when I go out and meet people. Um, and I advise that to everyone else. Just be very, very cautious of reintroducing yourself to the environment. Right. I, I can imagine that during finals night when there were many people and I'm sure all the safety protocols were followed to the letter. Yeah. What was that like for you to be with so many people in an enclosed area? How um, did you cope? I actually got really sick that following Sunday. Um, luckily, it was not COVID. Um, I tested negative the following week. Um, it was just the exposure to people again, even the baby residential germs it really does knock you out but um i was able to bounce back within 24 hours so it's like having a 24-hour bug right so for both of you what do you think it took ultimately for you to win like what traits of yours do you think eventually made you win did you like adopt like you know for athletes they have a champion's mindset in order to keep strong in the end, what do you um, attribute your victory to for this competition? So Sam, aside from being hot, how did you win? <laughs> and not getting stressed at all. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a bit hard to believe, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but my, my wife gets stressed a lot of times, so normally I'm there to actually de-stress her. So I have no time to get stressed, you know? Okay. That's a little, you know, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, okay, going back to your question. Uh, what was it? I'm sorry. What made you win? I lost track. Why do you think What made me won? win? Honestly, yeah, I've been working so hard uh, in the past many years and this is the lifestyle that I've lived. I think I was mentally pre prepared at this stage of my life to actually, you know, make an impact on the judges and uh, maybe somehow convince them that I'm the guy for this. You know, I've developed that mentality and courage that I do believe in myself and uh, I want to also say that I'm really honored and lucky to have won because it also does involve luck and I'm happy that it happened. Yeah. And it wasn't an easy competition. I saw so many cooking challenges, workout challenges, like Yeah, a lot of it. I had no idea how to cook. But I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I know how to make good videos. <laughs> Let me make it. 
<laughs> so video skills, video skill, editing skills made you in. How about you, Sam Lu? Um, for me, it, it was, the main thing that happened was I had to let go of my past. Um, I carried it with me like a 50 pound weight on my back everywhere and everything that I did. So, and people could see that. People could see the lack of confidence I had in myself um, when I went to work. And um, finally letting go of that just, just was a game changer for me. And I had more confidence in myself. I believed more in myself. And I was like, you know, people can forgive and move on. So show them that you're a different person now. Show them that you've learned from your mistakes and that you're more than ready to, to finish this strong, to commit to be the super bod and the, the role model that the people that they gear this whole um, image out to. Um, so I think it was just like the faith that I had in myself just kind of radiated through all the work that I did. Wow. And what's, what was in the end your trick to letting go of the past? That's not an easy thing to do. Um, I think like just one day I just woke up and I was like, why am I letting this bother me? Like I would get a lot of weird basher news. Like people would call me out on the most, like I, I would post pictures with a, an inspiring caption or a positive caption. People would just bring up my past. Like, I'm like, why? And then at one point, it's like I got numb to it. And I'm just like, I just don't really care anymore. Like, I got to stop giving so much power to this. Um, and, and I just let it go. You just simply, goodbye. <laughs> and, and that's just what happened. I was over it. I was so over it and ready to move on and to grow. And move on, you did. So we have some comments from our viewers. I like the plate. <laughs> I think that was for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Don Peter said, heart, oh, heart, heart. That's my guy. Hi, Don. <laughs> Gian Francis Ruiz dropping by. Was he one of the contestants? Hey, Jim. Thank you. Uh, hey. And from Hakobo Ko. Hi, Sam. Things. What does that mean? And so what advice do you have for our viewers who are all watching and possibly very intimidated by how you look and how, how, how hard you've worked and your cute little four packs and six packs? What's your advice for them to get off the couch and not be intimidated and to just get started? Um, just start. Okay, go ahead. No, no, that's what I was going to say. Take it away, Sam. Just start. <laughs> <laughs> just start. You know, recently we've been doing some online classes, uh, workouts, and in the beginning we thought people are going to be intimidated by it because, you know, everybody looks so fit and, you know, the videos sometimes may be kind of intimidating and everything. I would recommend them to join a community maybe even the pandemic is over or do it online or get around people who do these things you know things that are they want to get it involved in whether it's you know fitness or sports or whatever it really does help a lot because from the outside uh, everybody has their own perspective for you to really uh, understand what it means to live this lifestyle. You have to get a taste of it. And once you do, you'll be hooked. So go for it. Don't wait. Um, like Sam said, just start. It got to a point where I wanted to do so many things because I had more free time. And I just kept talking about it. And my roommate's just like, just shut up and do it. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> so yeah, just just do it. Stop talking about it and just get up and do it. Right. Just shut up and do it. Thank you so much, Sam and Sam, for all the tips and the tricks and the inspiring and motivating words. And congratulations to the two of you. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram. We're flashing the accounts below. That's so. Nice.
there. Happy Wednesday. Happy Thank Wednesday. You for Happy Wednesday. Thank you. Enjoy your evening. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. This has been Ask Miss Mears, and we'll see you all very soon. Bye.